After the devastating collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore this week, many conservative voices insisted that it could not have been just an accident. CPAC Chairman Matt Schlapp suggested it was caused by drug-addled workers. Conspiracy theory advocate Lara Logan claimed it was a terrorist attack. And Fox business anchor and granddaughter of Italian immigrants Maria Bartiromo said the problem could be migration. The ship involved in the collapse of the bridge is 948 feet long, called the Dolly, a Singaporean flagged container. But of course, you've been talking a lot about the potential for wrongdoing or potential for foul play given the wide open border. These grotesque accusations are part of a rightward shift in America, where the majority of our problems are laid at the feet of people Republicans claim have broken into the country like burglars to steal jobs and money from the real Americans. What they fail to acknowledge is that foreign labor has fueled the American economy for generations. Millions of young African men and women kidnapped and transported to this country and forced to become America's most efficient laborers. They were sold as property, bred like cattle, and resettled on forced labor camps with the single task of planting and picking cotton, cultivating rice and other crops, herding cattle, and building the grand homes and iconic buildings that define America. The profits from cotton alone propelled the U.S. into one of the leading economies in the world by the 19th century and made the South America's most prosperous region until the Civil War, after which the wealth of the country shifted north to the railroad men and the industrialists. With that came the 15,000 forgotten Chinese migrants who helped build the western portion of America's transcontinental railroad in the late 1800s. They were paid less than American workers and lived in tents, while white workers were given accommodations in train cars. These people immigrated to the country because there was a labor shortage that threatened the railroad's completion. They helped make it happen. In the East, it was roughly 10,000 Irish immigrants who helped build the eastern section of that railroad. Irish immigrants also helped build a number of America's key canals, like the Erie Canal, because few locals would work for the low wages that the newly arrived Irish would. During World War II, this country created an agreement called the Bracero Program that sought labor from millions of Mexican men to work legally in the United States on short-term labor contracts. These agreements addressed a national agricultural labor shortage brought on by the great migration of black plantation workers out of the South. But cheap labor kept and continues to keep being reproduced through migration. This country was literally built by unwilling and willing migrant hands. And they have always been met with disdain. We used their labor and promptly targeted them with stereotypes and anti-migration laws to stop them bringing their wives and families. There was the Chinese Exclusion Act, the first significant law restricting immigration into the, into the United States. There was the Know Nothing Party, which made anti-Irish immigration its main agenda. And then there was Eisenhower's racist mass deportation program, offensively called Operation Wetback, which forcibly deported nearly two million immigrants, a program that Donald Trump has promised to resurrect if he's elected, which could literally cripple the economy. Some estimate that it would cost the federal government nearly $900 billion in lost revenue over 10 years and would immediately reduce the nation's gross domestic product. Whether you like it or not, Immigrants continue to build America and make it run. According to the American restaurant, I mean, to, according to the restaurant industry, an estimated 2 million workers are foreign born. Immigrants comprise a significant majority of farm workers, and many of them are undocumented. According to the National Association of Home Builders, more than 31% of the people working in construction trades are immigrants. Baltimore Harbor is a perfect encapsulation of that American ethos. It is a massive business hub, bringing together people from a diversity of countries, like the victims of the bridge collapse, who were all immigrants from Mexico and other parts of Central America, and who came to this country for a chance at a better life. On Tuesday morning, Alejandro Hernandez, Alejandro Hernandez Fuentes, Dorlian Castillo Cabrera, Miguel Luna, Jose Lopez, Maynor Suazo, and a sixth unidentified colleague plunged to their deaths while fixing potholes so Americans could drive to work, ship your packages, and deliver your food. After the break, we'll talk more about who these men were and what they sacrificed for our economy. 
Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.